Welcome to the presentation called Ruling Out Myocardial Ischemia in Low-Risk Patients Presenting with Chest Pain. The purpose of this talk is threefold. We're going to review the current methodology of acute coronary syndrome evaluation in patients complaining of chest pain. We'll deal with the shortcomings of necrosis biomarkers, new techniques to detect MI, especially in low-risk patients, and the requirements from the ED perspective. Over 1 million patients in the ER present annually for acute chest pain. Estimated annual cost for diagnosis alone is $10 billion. 8% of patients were routinely misdiagnosed and uh, discharged home erroneously, including 2 to 5% of patients with AMI. ACS consists of a spectrum uh, ranging from STEMI on one end to unstable angina on the other. It's managed aggressively with reperfusion, typically via PCI. n STEMI and UA can be stratified with bi enzyme biomarkers. This is a pictorial of the natural history of uh, ACS. You start with uh, plaque rupture and associated chest pain symptoms, followed by ischemia, which is the uh, lack of perfusion. Uh, it is at this point that the patient uh, presents himself or herself to the ED with uh, persistent uh, necrosis, you have muscle death. Here is a uh, typical case uh, of a low-risk patient, 44 years old uh, a male, one week onset of cough, substernal chest pain, sharp and unradiating. Uh, pain worsened over the last 12 hours, but no other uh, history. Pretest likelihood of CAD uh, for this patient is 14% uh, based on his age and the uh, less than one um, of three anginal symptoms. Typical chest pain workup include the history, physical examination to rule out non-cardiac causes, serial ECG, cardiac enzymes, possible nuclear stress test, and total ED time easily is 12 to 20 hours. The disadvantages of troponins is that <coughs> it is a marker of ischemic necrosis as opposed to injury or ischemia. Variable onset. Again, going back to the, uh, the pictorial, when you have uh, necrosis markers such as troponins uh, being elevated, you already have uh, a, a certain extent of muscle death. Therefore, uh, it is clear that we would need to have a, uh, uh, ischemic markers that are accurate and diagnostic. We want to do the right thing to the patient throughout coronary ischemia while in the ED, and we want to stop before it's too late. If you look at the uh, likelihood ratio uh, to augment the pretest probability, you have specificity on the column, and I mean the uh, the row, and sensitivity on the on the uh, on the column. You want ideally both to be high to have a high likelihood ratio augmentation. Many techniques are out there currently that are um, under development, such as the multi-slice coronary CT. The randomized control study by Goldstein demonstrated efficacy of MSST to rule out coronary disease in low-risk patients. High NPV of 98% is seen. Choline is a potential ischemic biomarker that is uh, consistent, consists of a phospholipase D uh, activated during plaque disabilization. It is not useful alone, but in combination with troponins. Unbound fatty, fat fatty acids is also a potential ischemic biomarker. It's associated with FFA release in the bloodstream during an ischemic episode. A limited study showed that there is 91% sensitivity. Going on to ischemia modified albumin biomarker, this is a cobalt binding uh, measurement of albumin. The uh, sensitivity is shown to be 83 to 94%. In the uh, ER study of 208 patients, the three hour diagnostic sensitivity is 82%, but specificity is only 46%. However, in conjunction with troponin I and ECG, the sensitivity is up to 95%. PAPPA is another um, ischemic biomarker. Uh, this is zinc binding metalloproteinase, serves as a substrate for IGF. It is uncorrelated with troponin I, which makes it useful. 
Long-term predictor is something that is typically not think, think of as uh, thought of as useful in the ER, but the MPO is an inflammatory marker that potentially could be tested in patients in the ER to predict risk for developing CAD. The summary of all the different uh, potential biomarkers and tests show that the MSCT currently is most ready to go, mature. IMA, however, might soon be uh, a possibility, whereas PAPBA is uh, is far in the horizon. From the EPD perspective, how useful are these new techniques? In terms of efficiency, we uh, <coughs> need these techniques because we cannot perform a PCI on every patient. Accuracy is still under consideration, but uh, if something uh, such as ischemic biomarker is accurate, it should be used without hesitation. In conclusion, MSCT is the most ready method according to uh, randomized control studies. Uh, however, IMA looks promising but needs further clinical testing. PAPBA is also promising but at this point is very immature. Any questions? Thank you.